Hi YouTube, in this video I'm going to be making a cool little creature called a Rappatuni. It appears in the band scene in Return of the Jedi um, in Jabba's palace. So he sits on a little base and I'm just making the base first here. So I'll start with a bowl, cover it with aluminium foil and then I'm just going to be working over the top of this with milliput. So you can see that I covered the bowl with a thick layer of milliput. If you haven't used milliput before, it's a two part putty. You mix the two parts together and it sets rock hard in about four hours. And it just means with something like this, you can keep turning it around, smoothing it and refining it as it's starting to set. Okay, this is two millimeter aluminium wire. It's really soft, easy to bend. So what you can do is twist it around itself and make an armature for your figure. So this is a very basic armature and I've made the arms too long and the legs too long on purpose because it means I can trim them down later. Next I bulked out the shape just using some more aluminium foil. It's a really good material to use because it's cheap and you can just really squash it up just to get a shape really quickly. And then again I can work on top of this with some more milliput. This stage is actually really straightforward. It's literally just covering the aluminium foil with some more milliput. I do a fairly thick layer so that it's nice and strong, but you can see I just work bit by bit. So I've done the stomach, tops of the legs, and then I'll do the arms and the bottoms of the legs separately. I also made the rough shape of his musical instrument, which is literally just this kind of slightly curved, flattened looking shape. And I've really pressed the aluminium foil nice and hard, so it's really firm. Um, and that means again, I can add a very thin layer of milliput over the top of this. Right, I remembered that I had these plastic eggs in the shed. I keep all kinds of bits of plastic that could be useful for making things. Um, and these particular ones, I thought they'll be good for these kind of uh, extra sections that are added to the base. So I just used a saw to cut a slight angled um, cut in these. Um, and you can see I've just cut those top bits off. Don't need those just need these three sections and I'll stick them on like this and then I can mould over the top of these again with milliput. Okay I decided the lip edge of the bowl was a little bit uneven so I decided to refine it. So here I've just taken a really long thin roll of milliput and I'm just going to push this up into the rest of the shape. So it ends up looking like this and then I can go in and I can sand this down a little bit as well just with some normal sandpaper. At this point I decided to sit him on top of the base just to see what he would look like and I also decided to put the toes on. So I was able to trim down the legs a little bit to get the length right and untwist the bottom bit to make two of the toes and then I've just added in an extra wire to make the middle toe. I also added these tall shoulder spikes and then I decided that I would saw off the bottom part of him just to make a flat bottom so that it sits better on the base otherwise you would have a curved bottom on a curved base. If I ever need to saw any bits of milliput off I always use one of these Tamiya craft saws. If you haven't got one they're really useful I use mine all the time. Right I've gone over the main shape of the musical instrument with a thin layer of milliput. You can see it's really rough at this point. Um, I've just done it really quickly but then I'll go back into this and I'll sand it all down but it's going to be positioned somewhere like this. This is the base a little bit more sanded down and I've added the three bumps that's milliput over the top of those plastic egg shapes and I think this is looking quite cool at this stage and I've also sanded the top just to make it a little bit flatter. This is how I make the frameworks for the hands so it's just aluminium wire again twisted around itself you can see this has given me two fingers and a thumb and then a long bit left uh, for a bit of arm and I can twist that up into the arms. Here you can see the main embellishments on the base, all very simple, just made by rolling out some milliput into a flat layer and then cutting out the shapes and sticking them on. There's another section that I need to add to this which is where the wire comes out that attaches to his musical instrument. So I'm making that out of another half a section of egg this yellow dome here and I've just made a little thin layer of milliput on the bottom of this. I will actually add more milliput over the top of the yellow dome as well to hide that later. It's going to stick on the base just about here and then the wire will come out and lead up to his musical instrument. 
Right, after quite a bit more sculpting on the Rappuccini, I can show you what he's looking like now. He's going to sit on here like this, and you can see I've done his lower legs, and I've added the ridges down the front of the leg and the muscles. I've added the feet, I've added the hands, and I've started working on his head, although it needs a bit more work doing to the top of his head. I've made the hands so that I can just slot this musical instrument in like this. Uh, obviously the musical instrument still needs all the keys and things put onto it, but it's starting to really take shape. At this point I was just thinking I really want to paint this, but uh, obviously I've still got quite a bit to do before the painting stage. Okay, this is how I position the musical instrument to work on it, just resting on a tub of paint. But you can see I've added a wire, and I've also added all of the keys on the front here. So it's a bit like um, the keys that you would get on like a flute or a clarinet. And then I've added these bits on the end. I'm not entirely sure what they are, but they look like sort of little trumpet bits. Um, so it's looking pretty good. And then I can just slot this back through the hands and position it in place. So while this lump of milliput on the end here was still soft, I was able to just push these wires into it and then it's set, so it's attached now. And you can see I just added some small cable ties all the way along to make it look more interesting. And then it just feeds into that bit on the side that I was making earlier. So when Return of the Jedi was digitally remastered, they extended the music scene and they added in this rapper Tuni. Um, they also added the character called Joe Yowser, who's a Yasm, and I've made him in a separate video. But this guy was nicknamed the Jedi Rapper, apparently. It's a type of creature called a Shorda Ub. Um, he's a musician from Mamfa, and his instrument is a Growdy Harmonique. Right, for the first painting stage, I just painted the whole thing black. I'm using System 3 acrylic paints to do all of the paintwork on this. It's often a good idea to paint your creature black to start with, because it means that the black gets down into all of the little deep areas, all the nooks and crannies, and then you can do a lot of dry brushing over the top. I don't know if this shows up particularly well on screen, but I've just gone over with a very dark green, and this is all dry brushed. So if you look at a lot of the deeper areas, you can still see black down into some of those kind of uh, grooves and cracks in his skin and that kind of thing. At this point, I dry brushed him even more with a brighter green over the top of the dark green that I'd put on already. I've then gone in with this brown colour, and again, that's all dry brushed, but um, put on with more of a kind of a dabbing motion, almost like sort of sponging it onto the surface. You can see I've kind of faded it around all the edges, so it's black into the edges and then brighter on the higher parts, and that really starts to make it pop. Okay, still continuing to dry brush, but this time using gold paint to try and get this kind of metal effect. So dry brushing over all the instrument here, you can see all the little keys and things standing out nicely. If you're ever using metallic colours, it's definitely a good idea to underpaint it with black to start with. It really makes the metallic sheen um, shine out a lot more. So here you can see I've done it on a lot of these other bits on the base as well. And again, it's really starting to make all those pop too. I did a little bit of research on these Rappuccinis, and you shouldn't mess with them if you ever come across one. Apparently they can spit like a paralysing poison at you if they're threatened, and uh, it can make a human motionless for about 15 minutes, just enough time for them to escape, I guess. So at this point I was just about to add all the finishing touches on. So have a look at this stage as it is now, and then compare it to how it looks as a finished thing. Right, I'll just talk you through all these finishing touches. So obviously I've added a much brighter green on his belly area and also on his eyes, the same green. That really makes those stand out. I've added um, some yellow ochre colour to his fingernails and his um, claws on his feet. I've added these red kind of lumpy things on the end. That's just dry brushed red over the black. Loads of silver areas, all dry brushed on, so like the keys on the musical instrument and silver at both ends. That really helps make it look like it's made out of metal. I've done the same thing here, dry brushed silver over that bit, that looks metal, which is good. 
and I think he's just going to look really great with all the rest of the band members that I've made. So I've made Max Rebo, I've made Size Noodles, I've made Droopy McCall, and I've made Joe Yowzer. So this one, in amongst all the rest of that group, is going to look amazing. Check out my other videos if you want to see any of those builds. Um, I've also done a Yoda and I've done a Rancor Monster. So check out those and loads of other creatures from lots of different movies. Mainly weird creatures, like the weirder the better. Those are the sorts of things I like. Incidentally, I've always been a huge Star Wars fan. Return of the Jedi was the first movie I ever saw at the cinema. So check out my other videos if you want to see some of my 80s toy collections as well because I used to collect all of the old Star Wars figures when I was a kid and I've still got the whole set now. I thought I would just show you what he looks like from the back. Not that it really matters because I think everybody will only ever really view him from the front but um, it's worth seeing I guess. I also thought I would lean him up on this milliput box so you can see him from a bit of an angle. Just gives you a chance to see the tummy and chest area a bit better and also his um, mouth. What other creatures have I made? I've made Watto from Star Wars, I've done an Ewok village, I've done a life-size gremlin, Harry from Harry and the Henderson, Slimer from Ghostbusters, Facehugger from Alien, I've done Chet, a Critter, I've done Ghoulies, I've done a Graboid and a Shrieker from Tremors, I've done a Predator Head, the Fly, the Thing, Creature from the Deadly Spawn, Basket Case Mutants, Chatterer from Hellraiser, Mac from Mac and Me, Elmer from Brain Damage, Pale Man from Pan's Labyrinth, Garthin from Dr Dark Crystal, Ludo from Labyrinth, Wang from Arrival of Wang, Lord of Darkness from Legend, and Ed209 from Robocop. Probably loads of others that I've forgotten as well, but have a look at those if you get a chance. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd like to say a big thank you to Milliput for sponsoring this channel. If you guys haven't tried Milliput yet, go out and get yourself a pack because it really is an amazing material to model with. Like I say, check out my other videos if you get a chance. Um, hit subscribe to see anything that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.